Last week, we actually managed to make the merge request for the floating panels feature, but as you all know, it doesn't actually end there. We also need to support, let's say it like that, the merge request actually addressing all the feedback until it's completely done and accepted by the other developers as well. And it's actually a pretty important point. So the first thing I want to talk about is here. In GitLab, you have this very nice feature of being actually able to reply with emojis to merge requests. So you can actually see what's kind of, how many people like it, how many people don't. And in this case, I do have six likes and one dislike. So I think it's fairly good. It's a bit sad that I do have one dislike, which actually means that there's one person that doesn't quite approve it as is, uh, which is fine. Like, um, I, I would prefer if it wasn't uh, uh, for all patches. I think we should try to uh, strive for complete consensus, but sometimes you can't quite achieve that. Now, regarding the feedbacks, there are many of them and they're pretty good. Like I gotta say, I was actually impressed by how specific they were. And in this case, they even use the built-in feature of GitLab of suggestions, which means let's take this, this first one as an example. So this is a suggestion to add read-only to these properties like this, and then also use triple equals and double quotes for floating. This part of the patch makes sense as far as it goes for like a single quote uh, instead of double quotes. I don't know the difference and I don't quite care. For the triple equal, it's like indeed in JavaScript, it makes sense. It's like uh, check that this is actually equal without covering for the type, without, uh, you know, actually transferring anything from one type to another. The read-only property, I gotta say, is the first time I see it in QML. So let's actually go see what it does, QML read-only property. It's always nice to learn something new, even though at the end, I already know that I will probably accept, accept, accept this as is, because I mean, it look uh, this person looks like he knows what it is doing, so. So read only properties must be assigned a value on initialization. After a read only property is initialized, it is no longer possible to give it a value, whether for imperative, code or otherwise, which makes sense. I mean, it's not like I would like to change the floating or screen covered, uh, you know, variables. Hopefully it still updates to actually when this or this variable changes, but I'm pretty sure it, they do if it does if this change has been suggested. So I just apply the suggestion and I guess I can just click this and that's it. And then there's probably a commit button somewhere. Let's uh, see the next one. Can floating panel SVG be loaded when needed? Put it in a loader? That's a good question. I don't think so, but who knows? Um, okay, so what is a loader? Okay, so the loader QML object is able to dynamically load a subtree from a URL or a component. So to use it, I do need to make a component, which I do know how to use, but I'm not really sure if this is the right place to do this. So what I'll do is investigate a bit, like asking around and let you know. But for now, let's switch to the next one, which is this one. What does this do? Well, it changes uh, all equals to have one more equal and I also forgot accidentally some spaces. That's good. I can just add that suggestion and switch to the next one. In here, again, equals become three equals and that's always good to have. So I can just click on add suggestion. Here, 
again I have read only properties and we've seen before that that makes sense so I'll add that and this is the end of the list so we can just click on apply suggestions and uh, I think this commit message is pretty uh, let's say add read only properties and switch to equals 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 and that's it the important stuff from this MR is gone and then of course when you do a merge request like this you also get some discussion and in this case I won't really go through all of it because it's not that interesting and the idea is is this a feature that should be set by the plasma theme or by the user my personal opinion as it's pretty clear if you read the merge request this should be set by the plasma theme however there are other people rightfully asking me to make it customizable by the user and also another request is to make it customizable per panel so in my mind it would be either all floating panels or none I've been asked to make it maybe one panel is floating maybe one isn't but of course we need to ask ourselves is this worth it how much code should I add in order to support that feature and let's actually give it a look in here we have the file with all of the C++ of the panel view except this is the header file which means that it just comments with documentation and function declarations and QML properties declarations as you can see there's not actual code but we can see all of the properties all of the functions it's pretty useful it's particularly useful to show you this line here which is panel view opacity mode opacity mode so what's that so opacity mode is declared here can be adaptive opaque and translucent and if you know what I work on you probably guess that this is whether a panel chooses to have this adaptive opaque or translucent thingy going on or not and the point is right now there is no property whatsoever that says if a panel actually wants to be floating or not because that was until now defined by the plasma theme if we do want the panel all panels to be uh, like maybe floating or, but maybe not we would need a new boolean I guess property which says whether a panel floats or not and we should also communicate that choice to the QML stuff by creating a Q property. It's nothing too hard to do. We just need a new property, a function to read it, a function to write it, uh, um, this thingy, a signal for when it's changed. It's mostly boilerplate code, so it's probably fine. But then, but then, but then we also need to add a button in the panel settings to actually set it and how do we do that well let's pick up the code for the panel settings and here we are this is if you want to go for it in plasma desktop desktop package contents configuration panel configuration so what happens in here very simply put we have a series of heading I mean the heading uh, which says now is panel alignment and then we have a column of buttons with inside of it tool buttons which are like center bottom or, or right and then there is visibility always visible how to hide and so on and these are tool buttons tool buttons and we can see that here we can we say that it's checkable so when you press it it stays done it is checked if the config dialog visibility mode is one aka if it's set on how to hide and when it's clicked you s actually set with just one equal the config dialog visibility mode to be one aka how to hide so it wouldn't be too hard to actually implement new buttons 
However, my only like complaint, which would be hopefully temporary, is that these more settings pop up would become even taller. It would get uh, it would get actually underneath my video as it is probably already. And I think it's already pretty big as is, so we would probably have to split it in two columns. However, I am indeed planning on working on a redesign of the edit panel dialog entirely. Hopefully before like, uh, I don't know, February, March, February. So yeah, but it would totally ship in the next version. And I'm not a big fan, honestly. However, it's also true that those buttons would only show up if you have a theme that does support floating buttons. So the the question now here is, is it worth it? Because it's a bit of extra code, it's a bit of extra options in the panel settings, which I'm not a, a big fan of. Too many options are indeed a problem. However, well, I've been asked to, and it is true that for a Macintosh like the latest Macintosh uh, setup, you do need a floating bottom panel, but a non-floating top panel. So it is a use case that I understand. But again, it's all a question of is it worth it? And I don't know. I let other people decide and as far as I've managed to see in the merge request up until now, it seems like other people say that I should, so I will put in the extra effort that I've just described, which is not too much. And that should be about it. So it's almost there, I need to change these things. And you've also seen the nice feature of actually being able to apply suggestions. And when you do that, it's always a good idea to actually sync up your local changes to the one in GitLab where you actually applied the suggestions. Right now, suggestions are applied on the web, but not on your computer. So you go into the right repository, which is totally Plasma Desktop, right? Is it Plasma Desktop? What is this? Plasma Desktop, yes. Git branch, git checkout. Uh, what is the name of the floating panel? This one. And then we git pull. Maybe origin, no. Just git pull. Is that it? That isn't it, right? Git pull origin and then work Nicola floating panel. That should do the trick. We're saying, okay, git pull from origin, which is GitLab, work Nicola floating panel. This is the branch, it's the one I'm working on. And it rightfully says, 20 line has been modified in panel.qml because the suggestions, if you go count them, were 20 lines. So that was about it. And more kitty stuff will come in the following days. At this point, I'm doing videos pretty much daily. And I don't know what else. That was pretty much it. It's a bit late, so 